How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the next lesson in the Walking Jazz Standard Series. In this video we'll be looking at the great tune But Not For Me. But Not For Me was composed by George Gershwin in 1930 for the musical Crazy Girl. It's been performed countless times by great jazz musicians like Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Red Garland, Ella Fitzgerald and so many others. It's usually played in one of two keys, the key of F or the key of E flat major. We'll be looking at this tune in the key of E flat today. The form is 32 bars long with two 16 bar sections. The chord structure in the first three lines of each section is identical. The chords start off with a 2-5-1 in E flat major, but with a dominant seventh instead of the more standard minor seventh for the two chord. The difference is the note A natural, which serves to brighten up the sound. C minor 7 is the usual 6 chord, but once again C7 is preferred, setting up the F7 chord again. We see the same 2-5 as before, and a 2-5 into the 4 chord. B flat 7 is the flat 7 dominant, which resolves up by a step to the 1 chord. In jazz harmony, we call this a backdoor resolution. And the sixth chord again, but a straight minor seventh this time. As previously mentioned, these three lines are repeated in the second half of the form. So that just leaves us with the endings for each section. In the first ending, we come back to that bright sounding two chord again for two bars followed by a 2-5 progression. In the second ending, we have the same modified 2-5-1 progression from the start of the form, with F7 substituting for F-7. For our bass line today, the first chorus is a 2 feel, and the second chorus is walking bass. There are a lot of 2-5-1s in this tune, so I, I wanted to highlight a very useful left hand pattern that you can start to add into your walking lines that you can use over both the minor 2 chord and also the 5 chord in your 2-5-1 lines. We'll talk about that as we go through, but the basic idea is this. If you're going to play, for example, a 2-5-1 uh, walking line in C, in C major, if you start on a high D, say this one on the 7th fret of the G string, it's high D. The left hand pattern is like this. You're going to play uh, pinky finger, 7th fret on D, the root, 5th fret, the minor 7, and then 7th fret on the D string, the 5th, and then you'll add in a passing tone, uh, the A flat note leading into the root note of G7. So that's the shape, 7th fret, 5th fret, go down to the D string, 7, 6, 5, and then you land on the root note of G7. From there you can play the same pattern again, but after you play the G for G7 you can shift and just do, just do the same pattern from this position, 7, 5, passing note, root note. So that's the basic pattern of the left hand. And now let's have a listen to this bass line to see how it's used in the line itself. Mm-hmm. 
So we'll start off by talking about the two field here. Two fields, of course, we're mostly using roots and fifths, sometimes a thirds, but there's a lot that you can do with a two field. Two fields don't have to be boring. So let's have a look at this. Roots and fifths for the two, five, one. Just a lead up into the C chord. What I did there was just two leading notes into C7. And that's just a C major triad on C7. Two leading notes down into B flat. And two leading notes again into E flat and A flat. All right, that first A section, or that first half of that A section, not too much to talk about really. Root and third. That F and D, I'm sort of thinking of that as a substitution there. So I'm kind of thinking of it as B flat seven, leading into E flat. So F would be the fifth of B flat seven, D natural would be the third, and it just sounds nice. E flat major triad. More leading notes, roots and fifths, and a stop, and a big X note leading into the E natural on beat four. I've put an accent mark on that X note because I want that note to pop out. So hit it a bit harder. And now some bit of movement there. You can always add some walking bass into your two feel. But just don't overdo it. And a stop on the E flat. This little pause here, the last two bars, that's actually very common in jazz tunes. We often call that a solo break. So the saxophone player or the horn player or the guitar player will play on their own to lead into their solo. Okay, there's a pickup into the walking bass line and it's on the upbeat. So take it from the last bar. One, two, three, four. And a drop. Okay, what's happening in those four bars? We have a drop on F7, leading down to B flat, and then we've got B flat major triad, just walking right up the triad and passing note into E flat on the one chord, walking right up the major triad again, just E flat major triad and leading note into C7. Now on the C7 chord and also leading into the F7 chord in the next bar, we're playing this passing note idea. We'll play root, leading note into G, or in e into the fifth, and then E natural, which also functions as a leading note into the root of F7. And again, B natural leading note into the fifth, A natural, which is the third, but also leading note into the root of B flat seven. I think we've talked about this idea in a previous episode. Now the sheet music here reads B flat minor seven, E flat seven, but on top it says, E flat major seven, and then B flat minor seven, E flat seven in the next bar. So this is a common substitution you can use on this chord. So I'm thinking of this bar as E flat major seven, and I'm just postponing the two five of the four chord, the B flat minor seven, E flat seven, moving it over into the next bar, as we can see on the chords that are in brackets. This pattern, this is the first example um, of this pattern we talked about earlier. So this is a very nice walk walking pattern that you can use on both two chords and on five chords. It works well on two five ones as we talked about previously. This is the pattern once again. So root note, 
seven, fifth, and then leading note into the root of the next chord. Okay, so try to memorize this pattern. It's a very, very useful one for walking bass. Standard walk up, we've seen a million times. Thinking of those two beats as C7, and then shift. And then we get to the final half of the walking bass line. So we're way up on the eighth fret of the A string here. We'll play on F7 root, fifth octave, leading note, passing note into B flat seven. Now here's that same shape again, but we're gonna play it with the first finger. So F7 root, seven, fifth passing note. Root, fifth octave, major seven, and then we're gonna shift and play that same pattern again on C7. And I'm gonna shift and play it again on F7. And walk up to the four chord, last eight bars. This bar here, is on D flat seven, but you notice I'm playing the flat seven, C flat, down to the fifth, back up. So I never played the D flat note on this chord. I'm sort of treating this bar, this passage here, as less of a harmonic line and more of a melodic one. I'm trying to play a walking bass melody as opposed to outlining the chords very, very religiously by using root notes. You still get the sense of that's a D flat seven chord. And now walking down to the third of F7, and that's an F major triad with a seven on the fourth beat. Then again, the same idea, B flat triad, and then a drop to a final walk up, all the way to the 10th fret of the G string for that high F. Thanks for checking out the lesson. If you're interested in downloading the full four chorus walking bass line, please head over to my Patreon page. It's there in both standard and tab notations. Please leave any requests that you may have for any upcoming tunes that you'd like me to cover in the next video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.